We're back with part two of the SKR 1.4 mainboard install with TMC 2209 stepper drivers. This is part two of everything you need to know about setting up your Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 mainboard with TMC 2209s using sensorless homing. And we're not going to waste any time in this video. We're going to jump right back into the configuration where we left off. We were almost done setting up our filament sensor. There's only a few more things to do there, and then we can move on with the rest of the config. So let's jump right back into Marlin. Other options on the filament runout sensor, you can either enable a pull up or pull down resistor. Depending on the sensor you use, you might need one. By default, usually the pull up is on. That usually works for a lot of the sensors that I use. But if you have a different configuration, different type of sensor, you can also use this pull down option. Just comment out or take the comment off, whichever one you need. And then we have the filament runout script. By default, it's set to M600. M600 is just a script that moves your head to a certain location so that you can swap out the filament when it runs out. Most of the time M600 works just fine for what we need it to do, but you can customize that if you'd like to. You can run whatever you want right here when the filament run out sensor hits. And then we come to bed leveling. There's a lot of different kinds of bed leveling. On this machine I use bilinear, so I'm just going to uncomment auto bed leveling bilinear. Restore leveling after G28. G28 usually clears out your leveling map. If you don't want it to do that, you can uncomment this. I level the bed every time before I print, so I leave this commented out. Most of the leveling features I leave default. On the Mark 42 bed, it only has nine points, so I do three in the X, and that defaults to three in the Y. You can see that down here, so that's a total of nine points. You can make this as many as you'd like. I wouldn't suggest going much over 10, that might get a little confusing. When you set auto bed leveling, now it's going to assume your bed size and a nine point grid when you set it to three, just evenly spaced across the bed. I have to hit certain points. You've heard me say this a million times probably. This has been moved to configuration underscore adv.h. So we'll have to set those points over there. So if you need to go to certain spots on the bed to level, you'll have to adjust those in that file. We'll get to that. Z-safe homing is one I get a lot of questions about. By default, if you're using a Z-probe, it's going to assume that you're going to home in the front left corner on an i3 Cartesian machine. So it's going to try to probe right there. If you can't get to the bed with your probe in that location, you can uncomment out Z-safe homing. By default, that will allow you to probe in the center of the bed. I do use Z-safe homing, so I'm going to come comment this. I don't probe in the center. I probe on that first spot that's in the front left corner of the bed but it isn't at 00xy. So I just changed these up. That spot is actually at 31 in the X and nine in the Y. Remember all of these locations, this isn't assuming the probe's location, this is assuming the nozzle location. So if you're trying to figure this out with a ruler, go by where the nozzle's at, not where the probe is. You can also set the feed rate for homing. The slower you go, probably the more accurate it's gonna be. Just gonna leave these default. Bed's Q compensation, I do have a video on this. It hasn't changed a whole lot. You could set this up if you'd like. We're not gonna set it up in this video. EEPROM, I do turn these on. So we're going to uncomment, define EEPROM settings. This just allows you to make some quick settings that get saved from power off to power on, but you can overwrite them if you need to. You don't have to come in here and flash firmware. You can just set it in EEPROM. So it is handy to have, but it can also be a little bit confusing at times. So if you're having issues, you don't know what's going on, Go check EEPROM, make sure there's nothing strange in there. Filament temperature settings, we can go ahead and update these. By default on PLA, I run 215 with a bed temp of 60. ABS, by default I run 255, bed temp of 100. You can also set a default fan speed if you want it to come on. I just leave mine at zero. Nozzle park, you will have to have nozzle park if you have filament runout because it needs to know where to put that nozzle when it does something like that. So we'll uncomment nozzle park. You can adjust where it parks at. I actually like to flip flop these. I like it to park in the front right corner. So I want to do X max minus 10 and Y min positive 10. And the Z position of 20 should be okay. But that will put it in the front right corner rather than in the back left corner. I just like it better that way on an i3 machine. You can also set the feed rates when it goes to park if you'd like. The clean nozzle feature, most of the time when you see clean nozzle, that's usually done inside the slicer with some tricky G-code, but you can do the same thing here. It will attempt to wipe the nozzle on some sort of brush or strip to get it clean before you probe or before you start a print. 
We're not going to set that up today. Now we're coming down to the LCD screen and SD card section. This is going to depend on what kind of screen you have and if you have an SD card reader or not. I'm going to leave my LCD language to English. I'm going to uncomment SD support. This will allow us to access the SD card on the screen. You can set the SPI speed when you're accessing that card. You can enable some more error checking if you'd like. You can even change up what type of menus you want to see. No LCD menus, or you can slim them down. That will save you a little bit of memory if you'd like. I'm just going to go with defaults. Encoder settings, if the wheel you're using isn't operating correctly or you need to change it up, you can change the pulses per step here. And if it's kind of flaky, you can change up the encoder steps per menu item. Like if you're turning it and you only turn it one and it goes two, you might have to adjust it in here. Again, default should be okay. Encoder direction, this is one that I have changed many times. Depending on how you like the menus to go, if you want to turn the wheel to the right when you move up or down, this is how you flip flop it. If it doesn't seem normal to you, you can change these up in here. This will change the values for that encoder for the whole screen, every option. If you just want to change the navigation portion, you can use this setting down here. There's all kinds of different menus you can enable, like individual access homing, if you want that on your screen. You can enable your speaker, I usually do, just in case I have some sort of alert that I'd like to play when I'm swapping filament or something like that. Your default 2004 screen is this option right here, Rip Wrap Discount Smart Controller. I'm not actually using that. I am using the Big Tree Tech emulated full graphics screen. So I'm going to leave this commented out. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to enable Rip Wrap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. That will allow me to use that emulation option of this screen. If you have a serial touchscreen like this without the emulator, it really doesn't matter what you set your LCD to because it's going to ignore that anyway. It's just sending commands over the serial. It's not an actual screen. So I should be good for this printer. But there are tons of different screen options out here in Marlin now, depending on which one you'd like to use. And we've made it all the way to the bottom. We do have some servo settings and some LED settings. I don't have any of that for this build, but there's all kinds of different things you can do here in configuration.h. So now let's jump to configuration underscore adv.h. There's not a ton of stuff out here that we need to set, but there are a handful of things. So let's scroll on through. I will mention the settings on Thermal Runaway. If you're getting false positives, you might need to make some changes in here. Don't get crazy with how many seconds you allow it to scan or how many degrees because you do want to stay safe, but sometimes these can be just a little bit aggressive. These settings affect the hot end temperature as a whole, and then you have watch temp period down here. This is when you're using G-code commands to increase the temperature. That's how it's going to watch for them. Read both of these notes carefully when you're altering these if you need to. My Mark 42 bed at 12 volt, it does tend to trigger occasionally when the part fan comes on, so I do increase it a bit. So what this is saying is it's waiting for the bed to increase two degrees in 20 seconds or it's gonna throw an error. Mine doesn't actually heat that quickly. So I jump mine up to 90 seconds. So if it doesn't see a two degree change in 90 seconds, it'll error out. That's more than enough time for the bed. I get those questions about this a lot, about false triggering. So this is how you would adjust it if you needed to. Moving on. The auto fan pin settings. This is one of my favorite settings that I like to set because this will allow you to control PWM pins based on thermistor temperature. So I don't want my hot end fan to run all the time. I only want it to run when the hot end is heating up. So here we can just use the same method. We can go check the back of the board. Here we did use the second extruder heater pins for this. That's this one right here. And that is pin 2.4. But you can just change this right here to P2 underscore zero four. You can set the temperature that it kicks on, the speed that it kicks on. I'm good with 50 C. I'm good with full blast. Those should be good settings. That's a really nice feature. You don't have to listen to that fan run all the time. And I'm just going to kind of hit the highlights on the rest of the advanced file. There are a few things we have to change. You can control case lights if you'd like. There's some code in here for external loop controllers. That's a completely different subject altogether. By default, Marlin will allow you to use two X or two Y steppers, complete with their own separate driver. This is how you'd set those up. Here's where you can set up two Z motors using two stepper drivers. You can use that if you'd like. You could use E1, for instance. Dual carriage settings, we don't need all that. We do have to adjust home bump. When you're using centralist homing for X and Y, it doesn't like home bump. 
Home bump is when you hit the end stop, you come back a certain distance and then you hit it again to check to make sure that end stop is hit correctly. Since this homing doesn't like this, so we're gonna set home bump for X to zero, home bump Y, zero. Moving on, for some reason, if you would like to home Y before X, you could do that here. Some information for the BL Touch. There are several different BL Touch types now. You might want to go through here if you're having BL Touch problems. Backlash compensation. This is a rather new feature in Marlin. This will try to help you compensate for backlash as you're changing directions. Backlash on a gear or a belt. If you're seeing something on your part that might look like you're suffering from that, you can come in here and try to configure this and compensate for it. I have never done it, but maybe we'll do that in the future. Here's where you can use things like Digipots or PWM motor current controls. Like if you have a Rambo Mini, you can enable these and then you'll be able to set the current with a couple of G-code commands or just set it permanently in here in Marlin. We're gonna use the 2209 interface so we don't need this. You have some additional LCD features down in here. Your LED control menus. You can adjust more advanced features of how the things on the LCD screens are displayed. Power loss recovery can be set up here. I'm not gonna set that up today. You can change up how the SD card sorts its files. Here's a setting you might be interested in. If you would like to store your G-code files on the SD card that has the firmware on it, the one you use to load the firmware on your board, you can switch that up here. By default on most boards, you're gonna pull from the LCD screen, the card that's running on it, and that's what we're gonna do. But if you would like to switch over to that onboard card, you can uncomment this line and switch it over to onboard. We're just gonna use the default card that's on the LCD screen, so we'll leave this commented out. But if that's what you wanna do, that's where you enable it. And then we come down to the next feature that we need to enable, and that's baby stepping. We're just gonna uncomment this line. I like to have this on all my printers, just in case I need to adjust that first layer height on the fly. We can leave most of this default, but if you'd like a little more granular setting, you can reduce this number here. I like to enable double click for baby stepping, that means you can hit your LCD knob twice and it'll go right into baby stepping, but that's only when you're printing, remember that. If you'd like to make it always available, even when you're not printing, you can uncomment this line. And I like to make the baby stepping value adjust my Z probe offset. So we're going to uncomment this line. That Z probe offset that we set in the configuration.h file, this is gonna allow you to adjust that on the fly if it's not quite right. That way you don't have to go through this lengthy calibration process when you're installing a probe. You can just adjust it on the fly, record that number, and go from there. So we should be good with baby stepping. Linear advanced, I have a whole video on this if you'd like to enable it. I'm not gonna enable it in this video. Right here is where you can adjust all the probe points that your probe can reach. I have to do this on this printer because I have the Mark 42 bed that has specific spots. So I'm gonna uncomment each one of these lines and I'm gonna set a numbered value to the spot that I need to hit. Remember, this is where the nozzle is, not where the probe is. My minimum probe edge left, I'm gonna set that to a 31. So from the left edge, I'm 31 millimeters in. Minimum probe edge right, from the right edge, I'm 15 millimeters in. Minimum probe edge front, from the front edge, I'm nine millimeters in. And minimum probe edge back, from the back edge of the bed, I'm four millimeters in. That'll get me to all the specific spots that I need to hit while probing the bed. It's changed up a little bit from when it moved from configuration.h to configuration underscore adv.h. I do go over this in my ABL video. Arc support, we are now on a 32-bit board, so we don't have to worry about memory so much, but if you wanted to save some memory, like if you were on an 8-bit board, you can uncomment that line and save quite a bit. Currently in the slicer that I use, we don't use G2 or G3 commands, so that wouldn't be any value to us anyway. But I'll leave it for now. Firmware retract, that's where you can set the firmware to do your retraction and then you can set it with G code commands instead of having to do it in your slicer. This is a pretty interesting setting. I haven't tested it yet, but it could be handy and have its advantages down the road. So we might look into that later. Your advanced pause feature, it's gonna be commented out by default but if you have a filament sensor and you need to run that M600 script when your filament runs out, you're gonna to have to have this. So we're just gonna uncomment this line and this is gonna set what it does when it unloads filament. So when you do the change, what it does when it pauses and purge, if you need to change any of the links, you can do that all in here. For the most part, for a direct drive machine like Log, this is gonna be just fine. 
after we do a couple of filament changes, if something doesn't act quite right, I can come in here, change it up just a little bit. And now we get to the TMC section of configuration underscore ADV.H. The first part is for 2600 series. We don't have those. That's like what's on a duet board. And then we have the generic has trinamic settings. This is going to cover most of the TMC drivers. You can see it's highlighted all the drivers that we have. We set these in configuration.h. These are all the different hard-coded settings for those drivers. Microstepping, current, R sense value. We're just going to leave all these default. They should be just fine for a 2209. If you start to see some shift layers or some skipping, you might want to come in here and up the VREF a little bit, the current that the driver is going to have. You can also do that with commands from the terminal and save them in EEPROM. You can reset your default SPI pins if you have designated hardware pins on the board. You can then change them up in the software so you can use pretty much any pin. That's pretty handy to have, but mostly on a 2130 or the 5000 series driver. I am going to use Stealth Chop for all four of my drivers. That's the quietest mode. I don't have any issues with that on a 2209. If you're going to use Spread Cycle, that's the little higher power mode. They're quite a bit louder, but you can change the chopper timing by setting the voltage, and it helps with the whistle noise just a little bit. I've got 12 volt, even if I was going to use Spread Cycle, I'd leave it here, but here's all the different options that you can run them at. Monitor driver status, I do like to uncomment this line, because that way I can use these commands up here, 906, 911, 912, 122, to monitor what the driver's doing if I'm having issues. Hybrid threshold, I'm going to leave this turned off, but this is so you can go from stealth chop to spread cycle based on demand. If you're starting to struggle a bit, it should get you up into spread cycle and then put it back down into stealth chop in the quiet mode when it sees fit. So if you're interested in that, you can configure it right here. And then we come to sensorless homing. We're just going to uncomment this line. This will enable sensorless homing. We have our board set up for it already. You do have the option to sensorless probe. I haven't tested that yet, but I will in the future. Stall sensitivity, if you're using a 2209, your range is going to be from 0 to 255. If you're using a 2130, it's negative 64 to 63. For a 2209, the lower the number, the less sensitive it is. The higher number, the more sensitive it is. 8 is usually too low, but we'll set this on the command line. It's just easier that way, I think. So we'll leave it at 8, and we'll use our commands to set it later. And also, I'm going to uncomment TMC debug. So in case we do need some more information, we can get it. This will even allow continuous reporting if we want to turn it on in the terminal. And then down below you have driver options for L64 type drivers. Further down you have spindle and laser control features, filament width sensor features, some more CNC features. All kinds of good stuff here in configuration underscore ADV.H. You can even add a joystick to control your printer, which sounds like a lot of fun and we might do someday. But for now, I think we're good on our configuration. So I'm ready to build. So we're going to go over here to the platform IO icon. We're going to select the environment that we're in. It's going to look like this by default, but if you scroll down, you're going to find your processor chip. We're on that LPC 1769, and I'm just going to hit build. Down here, you can watch for errors. If anything pops up, we might have got it wrong in the code, but hopefully it builds clean. And the build was successful. You can scroll up down here in the terminal window. You can see right here we built for LPC 1769 because we're using the turbo board and we had success and it ran for about a minute. Now to load this firmware on your SKR board, I highly suggest the first time out, you just use the SD card. So take the SD card out of your printer off your SKR board and load it onto your computer. And you'll probably have an explorer window pop up as soon as you mount that SD card. Here's your firmware.current file. When you load your firmware by putting that firmware.bin file on your SD card, then you turn your printer on, it's going to take that existing bin file, load it on the board, and then rename it to the .cur file. So if there is a new bin file on here, it's going to do the same thing and turn that new bin file into your current file. So just for reference, if you wanted to rename this file to .bin, you could use it on another machine or reload it if you think you need to. So every time you compile, it's going to build a firmware.bin file out here in VS Code. And the easiest way to find that is to head back to your explorer. And in your current project directory, you're going to have a PIO. Expand that, expand build, and then the processor or board name that you're working with. In this case, it's the LPC 1769. And right here, 
is your most current firmware.bin file from our last compile. And you can just right click on it and reveal in File Explorer. There's the file we need. Let's just right click, copy, and we'll paste it on our SD card. Make sure you don't change the name at all and there's really no need to clean up that firmware.cur file. It's going to do that for you. Now you can take the SD card out of your computer. You can eject it down here if you'd like. And then we'll load it on our SKR board. The SD card has been loaded. We'll power on. We have Marlin 205.3, so that's good. And we've got our log SKR message, so we know we have the most current firmware loaded. When we power the printer back on, the File Explorer popped up because I have this plugged in USB. And you can load the firmware USB on these SKR boards. But if your Marlin configuration isn't just right, it won't let you do that. You have to have the serial settings set correctly. And I showed you that in the previous video. So that's why I'm recommending you do it with the SD card the first time. And then after that, if you need to make tweaks, you can do it right here in VS Code. So since we're plugged in USB, it should know the drive letter that we're going to use for our printer. You shouldn't have to update anything in VS Code. You can just come back over to Platform I.O. Since we've already built and haven't made changes, you can just hit Upload. We successfully uploaded to the printer via USB. You can see it called it Disk H because that's the drive that it found the SKR board to be. And now all you have to do is re-power cycle the printer to load that update. Both the USB and SD card versions of loading the firmware are going to work exactly the same way. Now let's test the printer and make sure everything's working correctly. So I'm going to use Printerface. That's just my preferred terminal. There are a few others out there if you'd like to use those. I'm going to hit connect. We are now connected to our printer on COM5 at baud rate 115200. We'll just start with some basic movements to make sure we have the motor direction set correctly. Let's try to go right on the X. That looks correct. Let's try to go back on Y. That looks correct. And let's try to go up on Z. And that looks correct. Now let's go ahead and heat up the hot end and the bed. On the hot end side, I want to make sure that that fan pin configuration we did is going to work. That fan should come on as soon as it hits 50 degrees. The fan has come on successfully, so we know we have that setting correct. And both the hot end and the bed are heating successfully, so we'll just wait for them to come up to temp. We're up to temp. Let's go ahead and do a test extrude to make sure our extruder motor is turning the right direction. I'll just do 25 millimeters. And I'm starting to see filament come out, so that looks good as well. Let's do an M119 to check our current end stop status as well as our filament sensor status. Our filament sensor is currently triggered. That means the filament is present on my machine. When it goes open, that's when it initiates the M600 cycle. So let's back our filament out to make sure that filament sensor is going to go open when the filament isn't present. The filament is out. Let's do M119 again. And now our filament sensor right here is open. So our filament sensor is working correctly. So the next thing we need to worry about is sensorless homing. If you do an M503, that's going to display a lot of the EEPROM information that's currently loaded on that printer board. These do have a simulated EEPROM, but it should work the same as your regular Arduino boards. It's always a good idea when you load firmware to reload EEPROM. So we'll do M502 to bring in all the firmware settings into EEPROM. And then we'll do an M500 to save it. Again, you can take another look with M503. We are concerned with this M914 command. If you run the M914 command, it's going to show your homing sensitivity for sensorless homing. Now, I know for a fact that the default setting of 8 is too low for this machine. But you're going to have to play with this a bit. Depending on the printer you have, you might have a different sensitivity for X or Y. And let me just show you what it's going to do if you have your sensitivity set too low. It's going to crash into the end stop. So we'll just go ahead and do home all. And you can see our Y crashed and sensorless homing didn't halt it. But the Z did home correctly, so at least we know the probe's working. So we definitely need to increase that sensitivity a bit. X did home somewhat successfully, but I still think that that isn't quite sensitive enough. So we're going to do M914. Let's change X to 20. And let's set Y to 40. You can do M500 to save that knee prom. And let's just home all again, and maybe things will be just a little bit quieter this time. So X still isn't sensitive enough. 
it halted the printer, so we'll reset and we'll connect back up. X did work the first time, but there might have been something in EEPROM messing that up. So let's go ahead and do M914X60 to increase that sensitivity and Y60. We'll send that, M500 to save it. Let's try that home one more time. When I set it to 60 on the X, X was still crashing, so I actually bumped it up to 80, and now we're homing correctly. There really is no science to the stall guard centerless homing setting, you just kinda have to play with it until you get it right. So I'm happy with the centerless homing setting at 80 and 60. Let's go ahead and do a G28 to home. And I'm gonna do a G29 to make sure my auto bed leveling sensor points are correct. Auto bed leveling looks good. You will have to adjust your Z-Probe offset. I won't go into that in this video, but I do have an AVL video. I'll leave the link to that in the corner. So since I don't have any filament in here right now, I'm gonna to go to change filament. I'm gonna preheat for PLA. Our nozzle's up to temp. It's doing the unload sequence, even though I don't have any in there, that's fine. Now it's gonna tell us to insert our filament. We can press the button. It'll start pulling it in. If you need to adjust the unload and load links for this, you can use the M603 command. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna let it purge just a little bit more. And I'm good, the filament's coming out, so I'm gonna hit continue. Our filament change is complete. Now pretty much all we have to do is start a print. Well, let's print from media. Of course, you will have to adjust your slicer settings a bit if you're gonna use auto leveling or something like that. But again, that's in the ABL video. And we'll hit print. And while you're printing, you can double click your encoder wheel and that's gonna bring up baby stepping. And the way we have it set up is to adjust the Z-Probe offset. So if you need to tweak your first layer a bit, you can just do it right here. Mine looks like it's a little bit too squished. So I'm gonna roll mine down. In the firmware, I had mine set to 0.4. I'm much happier right now with how the printer's configured at a 0.05. First layer looks good. After you get your Z offset set how you want it, you can go to the terminal and do an M500 to save it in EEPROM, or you can go into the menu, go to configuration, scroll all the way to the bottom, and hit store setting. That's just like running an M500 command, and now that probe offset will be set next time you'd like to do a print. And we are up and running on our SKR 1.4 mainboard. And there it is. Hopefully everything you need to know about your Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 mainboard install with your TMC2209 stepper drivers using centerless homing on your X and Y axis. Now I appreciate anyone that went through both of these parts with me. I know there was a lot of information in here and they were fairly long, but hopefully this helps a lot of others out in the future with their installs. Hopefully you found this series helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.